I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain hmm. the veil and did Mary have to wear a veil? Good question. A lot of people have that question. Madam, Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know, Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover her, shave off her hair. Your Bible says that. <laughs> the woman, the woman who bathes her hair says, shave them off, shave it off. That's what the Bible says. And you woman, the, your Bible says she must not be allowed to open her mouth in the church. But that's your churches, they don't believe all that. And your people don't believe in that. So you are inviting trouble. You know, because of this, in America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street. And people just walk by, looking the fun. Say, oh, maybe they're enjoying themselves. Woman is being raped. No, no, I said, you are inviting it. Look, this modesty, the nuns, the nuns, you know, the nuns, Roman Catholic Church, nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast, that's a Scarborough, and all that with bikinis and tangas and G-strings, look. She... <laughs> It's attracting, <laughs> even an old man like me, I tell you, my brother. Even an old man like me. Interesting. If, if I went there, I tell you, I'll be burning inside. I'm telling hmm. you, look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. Hmm. Very the honest thing answer. that endures man more than anything on earthly existence is woman. Do you know that? I don't know. The Quran says, the Quran says, Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahwati min al-nisa. Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, min al-nisa, women. Walbaneen, then son. You know, I've got 11 sons. I can make my own football team. You know, how, how the, you know, it makes me feel proud. I've got 11 sons, you know. My own football team, my own cricket team. Mm -hmm. Walbaneen. And number three, well, anatir al mukantar min al zahabi wal fidda, and hoarded heaps of gold and silver, and wealthy land, and horses branded for excellence, and all this. This is the list that is given in the Quran. Number one, women. The Quran says, the thing that allures man most on this earthly existence is women. Hmm. And I'm telling my Western friends that I don't have to prove that to you. I don't have to convince you. I said, you see, in my country, in the city of Durban, city of Durban, I think we'll end with this. We'll end with this. Okay? We'll end with this. In the city of Durban, there is a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. You know, lorries, lorries, trucks. You call them trucks here too? Trucks. We call them trucks. And on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. Then G North, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. I'm asking these Westerners, I said, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second-hand truck or with a tractor? Except the man. You see, the woman is being diagnosed with so the Edwards. And BMW, I don't know you have BMWs here. It's a motor car, it's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes-Benz. I'm not in the market for it. You see, I started with the Volkswagen Beetle. I did 120,000 miles and I had to change for another Beetle and another Beetle and another Beetle. Then they stop making the Beatles, you know the Volkswagen Beetle. They start the Golf, so I had to buy Golf number one, Golf number two. I'm still not in the market for a BMW, but I am forced to read this advert in my newspaper. I see a BMW motor car and with a woman in the skimpy, skimpiest of bikini, what you call the tanga, you know the G-string. <laughs> <laughs> She's standing in front of the motor car. And it's, uh, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. <laughs> I 
I am asking, I am asking, the woman of the car, the woman is buying the car, and the herd is underlined, test drive her now. I said, look, this is what you're leading yourself to. This is, the Westerner, he sells his mother, his wife, his daughter, his wife is a star, and she's been mangled on the screen, simulating rape, and they, they enjoy it. You, you enjoy your wife being simulated. It's not real rape, but you know, it's simulated. You can see everything about it. She's being raped, your mother, your wife, your daughter, and you enjoy, your wife is a star. So, sick, sick. No, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, we haven't come to that sickness yet, we Muslims. We try, we try to keep away from it. This is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you. But we say, you are playing with fire, my child, and you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. Before this, you see the Christian missionary, he says, you see your Prophet he was not only an Ummi, Ummi one who is not learned, we agree, that he didn't go to school. Our Nabi Karim Salaam, he didn't know how to read or write. No human being ever taught him a word. His teacher was his creator. So he said, not only he was an Ummi, but he was ignorant, he was jahil. Now that's, we take exception to that. Ummi, unlearned, we accept. His teacher was his creator. But when you say his jahil, as jahil fellow and ignorant fellow is going to mislead you. So he says, your prophet is also a jahil. He said, what, what makes you to say that? He said, you see in your Quran, in Surah Maryam. In Surah Maryam, Ayah 23, I think it says, فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُهُ So at length she brought the babe to her people. After Isa al -Islam was born, the circumstances being peculiar, that she, well, this child was born without a father. She had retired to a remote place in the east, and after the birth of the child, she returns with the child, carrying him in her arms. فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُهُ They said, قَالُوا They said, Ya Maryamu, laqad jikti shayan fariya. Say, oh Mary, truly an amazing thing has thou brought. Shah, shah. We know you're not married and you bring a child, a bastard child. You know, you're carrying shamelessly, parading in the, in the, in the village. Ya ukta Haruna, o sister of Harun. Ma kana abu kim raasaw im, wa ma kana ummu ki baghiya. Said, oh sister of Harun, your father was not an evil man. No, it was your mother a woman and chaste. How is it that you brought this by bastard child into the world? That's the insinuation, that's the charge. What does she say? What can she do? For Asharat Ilay, but she points to the babe, means ask him. They say, Qalu kaifa nukallimu man kana fil mahdi sabiya. Said, how can we talk to one who's a child in the cradle? And by miracle, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam spoke. Qala inni Abdullah, most certainly I am the servant of Allah. Atani al kitab, he's given me revelation. Waja'alani nabiya, he's made me a prophet. He defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. But the charge is, the charge is, your prophet didn't know the difference between this Maryam, the mother of Jesus, and that Maryam, the sister of Musa and Harun. Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam had a sister called Miriam, in Arabic, Maryam. Right. Really, Mary, say. Jesus had a mother called Mary, in Arabic, Maryam, in Hebrew, Miriam, say. But your prophet didn't know the difference between this Maryam and that Maryam. Ukhta Harun, sister of Harun, and Harun lived some 1,300 years before Jesus. That Maryam lived 1,300 years before this Maryam, and your prophet is confused. He didn't know the difference between this Maryam and that Maryam. He's ignorant. <laughs> That's the charge. That's the charge. What's the explanation? <coughs> So we say, look, no, this is a respectful way of putting that, look, your father was a good man. You come from such a noble family of the prophets of the, the Bani Israel. You descended from there. And now how can you bring this child without a husband? And the Muslim will accept. What I'm telling you, you'll accept. Yourself. You come from such a noble family of the prophets of Bani Israel. Your father was a good man. Your mother was a good woman. And how you bring this bastard child? That's the charge. So I said, that they're trying to say you come from a noble ancestry, noble family, prophetic family. You all accept. 
But the Christian says, no, 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 no. Your prophet didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want to listen to your reasoning, to your logic. Your prophet didn't know the difference. He was ignorant. How do you answer that? So now the thing is thrown at me. I says, very easy. If you know the answer to your problem is in your book. I say, it's in your book. Where? As the first book of the New Testament. Gospel of St. Matthew. First book. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Can you forget that? 1, 1, 1. You know, when you have three aces in a game of cards, you are a sure winner. Book 1. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Is the answer is there. To your problem is there. So what does it say? It says, this is the genealogy, genealogy of Jesus Christ. Christ. Son of That's David. what it says. I'm reading it. To him. To the Christian. This is the genealogy, the ancestry of Jesus Christ. The son of Abraham. The son of David. Right? He said, right. I'm reading correctly. He said, yes. The son of Abraham. The son of David. Right? He said, right. In the Gospel of St. Mark, he's described as the son of God. Right? He said, right. In the Gospel of St. Luke, he's described as the son of Joseph. Right? He said, right. He is the son of Abraham, and Abraham is his father. He is the son of David, and David is his father. He is the son of God, that God is his father. The son of Joseph, Joseph is his father. A guy who has got four fathers, what do you call him in your language? You are st <laughs> oh, I see what he did there. <laughs> no, what do you call him? In your street language, what do you call that guy who has got four fathers? <laughs> He said, no, 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 it doesn't mean that. I said, then what does it mean? I'm telling you, I know it doesn't mean that. But mm -hmm. your book says he's the son of Abraham. Abraham is his father. Son of David, David is his father. Joseph the carpenter is his father. And God is his father. He's got four fathers. You're Jesus. Four fathers. What do you call him? <laughs> no. So, my dear brothers and sisters, you see, if you are working, if you are trying to do a certain job of work, all knowledge is filled up unto you. Our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave us the secret of knowledge. He said, Balligo Anni Walla Waya. Deliver the message regarding me, even if it is one verse. Is there one thing you know about Islam? Share it. Is there not a single thing that you know about Islam? Not one thing you can talk about Islam? Then you better get lost. You are dead wood on the house of the ship of Islam. We are carrying you dead wood. You don't know one thing you can talk about Islam? Something, one thing, man, about your hygiene. Huh? <laughs> I understand that our Khalid Balala, you know, he made some remarks about the president, you know, that he doesn't wash his backside and how can he be the president? <laughs> Look, one thing, man, one thing, you know, don't you know your hygiene? We are the most hygienic people with all our poverty. We are the most hygienic people. We are the most hospitable people. Wallah, we are. Talk about it, man. Talk about something that you know about Islam. Huh? If you don't know about theology, about psychology, about philosophy, you're not Hafiz al Quran, don't worry. Do you know one thing about Islam? Any one thing you can talk? Man, open your mouth. As soon as you start talking about one thing, that one thing again and again, Allah adds more. This is how knowledge increases. Mm. This is how I got my Very knowledge. Very good point. You know, I didn't go to university to learn the Bible, Darul Ulum, to learn Islam, no, nothing. Just doing talking, 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 and problems, problems, and the problem is created and I get the solution. Problem is created, so my knowledge increases. Mm -hmm. Same thing, secret with you. Our Nabi said, Balliqa anni wa aya. Deliver the message regarding me, even if it is one verse. Go to town, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, Something that you know to us, learn to talk. And as soon as the guy poses a problem for you, you'll be looking for the answer. And when the answer comes, you'll be able to retain it. Like this, I can keep on throwing things at you. Facts, facts, facts. This is more in mere entertainment. You, you go home and it's forgotten. I said, Mr. D, that gave a fantastic lecture. What did he say? <laughs> we don't know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Just one thing, oh, pick it up and go to town. The Christian, he hasn't got a leg to stand upon. He's the most nonsensical religion on earth. Most nonsensical. Oh, really? Adam and Eve eat the apple and we all go to hell for that. The most nonsensical religion on earth and that guy is getting converts and we're not getting converts with the Quran. Simply because we are not talking. Jazakallah for this opportunity. Begotten means exactly and precisely what it says. Begotten, fathered, 
conceived of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was indeed, as man, born of the Spirit, born of the Father, begotten, not made. And I'm so glad you made that distinction, because it is central to the Christian faith, and it actually establishes his deity, that what is begotten of God is God, and what is created of God is not God. And that is why the deity of Jesus Christ is revealed in his birth. Uh, that just as you so eloquently quoted Billy Graham saying that the Holy Spirit overshadowed the Virgin Mary. And, 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 and uh, you seem to think that someone was upset by the idea that, that the Father sired Jesus. Well, I am not upset by that at all. It's absolutely scriptural. And therefore, uh, I want to ask you to confirm, as I think you have so eloquently said on, on, the, uh, on the videotape, uh, that the distinction between the Islamic religion and the Christian faith, the Christian revelation, is that the Jesus of the Quran is a creature created by Almighty God, whereas the Jesus of the Christian revelation is begotten of God, is an, a manifestation of God in the flesh. And we say, therefore, that Jesus, just as Billy Graham uh, pointed out, uh, it was born as a result of the impregnation by the Spirit of the Virgin Mary. And as Irene Milan pointed out in our earlier on, we have, therefore, Jesus, fully man and fully God. Now, to an unbeliever like yourself, we do not expect that to make sense unless the Holy Spirit gives the revelation, because no one will say Jesus is Lord but by the Spirit. You see, in this expression we got John 3.16. I take it you have it in your American Standard Version. That's right. But the RSV, you said you don't use it. It isn't best known to yourself. But Christian scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations. I don't know whether you, since you do not claim to belong to any denomination, they went and produced this book. And the, the testimonies, the praises that which are being heaped upon this translation by Anglican Church newspaper, Church of England newspaper says that this is the finest version which has been produced in the present century. Times Literary Supplement says a completely fresh translation by scholars of the highest eminence. Life and Work says the well-loved characteristics of the authorized version combined with a new accuracy of translation. And the Times says the most accurate and close rendering of the original. They are claiming that this translation goes to the most ancient manuscripts. And in John 3.16, they have eliminated the word begotten because they say these are defects in your present scriptures, more especially based on Jerome's Latin Vulgate, the King James Version, the authors here, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say that the King James Version, used by a billion Christians today in different, different languages, King James Version, says, yet the King James Version has grave defects. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the King James Version was based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. So they revised it. That is what the RSV is. 1952. And the word begotten they threw out as a fabrication, interpolation. It was a fabrication. So if this was inspired by God, if God said, I have begotten a son, it would be something. But since it was an interpolation, it's work of people, you know, with vested interest, like you would, wouldn't use this Bible at all, because it, that it won't suit you. Whatever you are out to preach, it hasn't got it. The Ascension is taken out, the verse on the Trinity is taken out, and there still remain those many defects, serious, grave defects, you see, which need certification. So this word begotten is a defect and they took it out. But Mr. Uh, Mr. Dida, yes, if we were going to base our belief on one word, we would be a lost people. There are many other scriptures which I can quote and which I've quoted. No, no, you quote one at a time. It. If you quote one at a time, like this now, That's right. 
the word begotten we are discussing as a look this word begotten you have to tell me now that these 32 scholars of the Christian Bible were not scholars that they were lay people or, or barbers shoemakers they, they went and produced this book these 50 denominations that you don't belong to that but those 50 denominations are all heathen or they are unbelievers they went and produced this book and they made they sold millions of this and they made a net profit of 11 to 15 million on this book alone May I quote yes. from this book, yes. The Doctrine of the Begotten Son of God from the Scriptures, all right? The now, word begotten. The word begotten. Yes. Right. The RSV, I do think it's an inferior translation, but it's one you put your faith in. I quote. I didn't. This is your church that have produced it. <laughs> <laughs> your point is. All right. For to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Or again, I will be to him a father, he shall be to me a son. And in verse 7, of the angels he says, who makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire, but of the son he says, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. Now, you t where was this quotation taken from? Hebrews chapter 1. Right. Quoting the Psalms. Right. So, we go to the book of Psalms, and we find that this was attributed to David. God's Almighty is speaking to David. He said, I will declare a decree unto thee, that thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. God is speaking to David. This day means today I have brought you into being. Begotten. When did God Almighty tell Jesus that I have begotten you today? In the canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Is there a single statement, voice heard from heaven, God saying that I have begotten you today? No. But this is what we read in the book of Psalms and God had spoken those words to David. Now if you take them out from there, and you apply them as Paul has done to make God out of Jesus well that is his business but what I am saying is this that Jesus Christ that is not it's an amazing thing that you are not quoting me a single word of Jesus whatever you are out to prove there is not one word I am hearing that Jesus said this or Jesus said that you are quoting me Paul again and again you quote, he's quoting scripture from the Old Testament and I said when you look at it on the very face of it he's not talking about Jesus, he's talking about David. Actually at that point perhaps we can move on to the next topic and see if we can progress from there. Alright. The next one please Jonathan. <coughs> the that debate with American soldiers back in 93 I was a little baby back then. Throwback. It's a, it's a pleasure seeing you in person. I've seen you in TV. And right, I was right. Just always in cassettes and everything. Really? Right, right. Uh, I couldn't, I wouldn't want to miss this opportunity. Wow. How about for the benefit of me, who don't, <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> How about an, a, a form of introduction? Um, well, and my name is Ahmed Didat. Ahmad, 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 so we explain to them the relationship between ourselves and the Jews and the Christians that almost everything the Muslim does is in your Bible. So it's in the Christian Bible. I don't know whether you've been into a Muslim house of prayer. Have you been? I have. Yes, I have been. I was in the... Uh, the first thing you're made to do is to take off your shoes. Except here. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason behind this is that Moses, when he was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, Draw not thy hither, 
put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place where thou standest is holy ground. In respect of that commandment, we Muslims we take off our shoes. Before we go in for prayer, we make ablution. All the exposed parts of the body are being washed. The hands, the feet, the nostrils, the nape of the neck, gargling the mouth, brushing the teeth. This the Muslim does five times a day, every day of the year. The one who is particular with his prayers. And purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with a person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice in any country, among any community. You know, washing yourself, brushing your teeth, so five times a day, good hygienic practice. Secondly, it serves certain psychological purposes, meaning mentally it's preparing the person for prayer. He's washing not because he's dirty, he's washing because he's going to meet his Lord. So, it creates a mental attitude. Thirdly, this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses in the book of Exodus. That is the second book of the Bible, it is written. You don't, you don't mind. No, no, no. In the second book of Exodus, so it reads, and Moses and Aaron and their sons. And Moses and Aaron and their sons washed their hands and the feet they had. When they went into the tent of the congregation, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. So we Muslim are still fulfilling another biblical commandment. Though we haven't got the labor of a Jew, nor yet that of a Christian, yet in our humility we claim that we are more Jewish than the Jews and more Christians than the Christians. In this, that we are trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. So this is my line of activity. Mm -hmm. I can and answer people's questions, you know, any question that they have, I answer. Mm -hmm. This is my pastime hobby <laughs> or <laughs> occupation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's who? Ahmed Adi. Ahmed 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 Oh, I'm not saying 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 I'm not but you know, we accept that this is what the teaching is. Taking off the shoes is in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Ablution mm -hmm. is also in the Quran. Mm -hmm. It's in the Quran. That we must wash ourselves. Mm -hmm. And also in the Bible. You have quoted, you have quoted the Bible. Yes. Uh, so I, I would take it then you have, you are well read in the Bible. Oh yes. Okay. I am well read in the Bible. Okay. Ah. I can't. I've never read recipes at all. I don't, I don't either. <laughs> so I could, I don't uh, think I wouldn't know what you were challenging with um, a recipe because we never read recipes. I don't. I don't read that. I don't. No. No. Yeah. If, if, if Mr. Rusty wrote that, that kind of vulgarity. Huh. That is what I want well, the Britishers and the Americans to know. Well, I, well, well no, we, no, don't know, no, no, we don't know. We don't know. I don't know what he wrote, but I don't no, know because the British and the Americans have been defending him. To say freedom of speech is a right, freedom mm. of speech. Sure. Like you said, now we have freedom to talk, you have a freedom to talk to me. Mm. But, but I, I have no right to abuse your mother. <laughs> I have no right to abuse your mother. You don't like this freedom, I can call you go man, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. And we talk like that. But now if I start abusing your mother, taking your mother's name, calling her names, man, you have a right to punch it, to throw a punch. <laughs> So in other words, another guy went to extremes. He told things about us which hurt us very much. But at the same time, he didn't spare the Americans. He didn't spare the British. He didn't spare the, the black man. He didn't spare any white woman. So, but this time because the people didn't know, we started crying. So it made people happy. People, you know, who who are terrified of us, who take that we are a challenge. It made them happy. So I went around a lecture tour of Britain, 
and America. And I spoke about how Rushdie fooled the West. How he fooled the West. Well, guess what? I think there's three in here that he didn't fool because we don't know what Rusty is. Like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the guys, the fools who said now, you know, sure. you, are, you are locked, stuck, and you know, you are for him. Mm -hmm. for Although. Him. So then so you didn't know if you read and then if you say, look, I don't mind what he says about sure. my mother. What about your mother? About your mother? Sure. Then you have a right to say, look, I said, man, this is nothing. If we call your mother, and he said, no, I tell him, it didn't hurt my mother. My mother is already dead and she's buried. No, that would be something. You say, no, I call him your mother. And you say, no, I, I, this is a joke, man. It's only yeah. a joke. So that kind of thing. However, that is not our subject. You know, that's not yeah, our subject. But although I, I subject. wanted to ask, though, yes. do you agree with the, the um, what is that? They put out a, what did they do for them? Uh, uh, no, the fatwa, the fatwa. Fatwa? Yeah, the fatwa. Yeah. In, uh, from Iran. Right. No, it's, it's actually biblical. That fatwa is actually in the Holy Bible. Do you know that? What do you mean fatwa? What do you mean by that? Fatwa, the decree of death. Decree of death. Decree of death. Decree of death. The sound, yeah. sound and rusty. Oh, well, blasphemy? Yes, 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 yes. That's in your Holy Bible? Yes. Did you know that? Do you know that? Oh, talking? blasphemy, yeah, blasphemy is definitely there. Death, death Bible. or blasphemy? Go. In your Bible? Oh, sure, definitely. Sure. Blasphemy right, so, is, okay. so it's biblical. See, what Khomeini is supposed to have said, or a decree he had passed, is in the Holy Bible. That is biblical. <laughs> Unless you say you don't accept that. You don't accept the Bible as the word of God. Then it's different. But if you accept it as the word of God, it's binding on you and me. <laughs> I believe, I believe that. <laughs> now, that, that we, now, we are, now we are at a point where we can probably discuss. Because I do believe that it is binding upon us. Yes. Now, you read it, but obviously I don't think you take it as being binding upon you. It depends on that, you see. Because in the Holy Bible, mm -hmm. the one that you're holding, yes. we recognize Three different types of evidences. Three different types of evidences. We find one type of evidence where we recognize as the word of God. You know the statements that I made. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. Yes. I, I will raise them up a prophet. Yes. From among the brethren, like unto thee, like you. Like unto you. Like Moses. Moses. And I will put my words in his mouth. That's right. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Yes. 